Hello and welcome to the Robins Report podcast. My, I am your host, Tom Wade, and yes, it's another show. However, slightly different because today is quite a big day for the pod because we finally, well, I finally found three people willing to talk to me who don't go by the name of John Palmer. So there you go. But yes, it's the first ever <laughs> fan show. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Got some great personalities on today. Some great views from the opinion of the uh, chat today. It's been very interesting. So, yeah, let's wait and see what comes. But first and foremost, this is the Robins Report Fan Show. Yes, hello, welcome. Of course, I'm your host, Tom Wade. Joining me today for this first ever fan show, we have Owen, Joe and Cy. Guys, um, just quickly, I want to get a little chat with yourself before I have to do something rather important before Twitter does get on my back. So we'll start (laughs) off just a little introduction, just to let the people know who you are. So Owen, we'll come to you first. Uh, yeah, brilliant. So, uh, name's Owen. I have been uh, supporting Cheltenham since 2010. So, uh, coming up 11th or 12th season, supporting the Robins. Uh, first game was a JPT game against Plymouth, which we lost 2-0. So, what a way to get started. And you still came back after that. Brilliant. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, well, uh, Simon, um, I've, uh, I've been, my first game was August 9th. 1994, uh, it was a friendly against the Man City 11. Uh, we drew 3 3. Um, and I have two vivid memories of it. One were a couple of kids winding up their young goalkeeper saying he was better than Tony Coton. Um, and the other one was someone I always assumed was Keith Curl, but I've seen the team sheets since and it wasn't. Um, having an absolute mare at the linesman, properly screaming, effing and blinding at him. And I was hooked from the start, man. That was it. I was nine years old, nearly 10. And that was it. That was then just new. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> and of course, last but not least, Joe. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Joe. Um, my first game, I'm trying to wreck my brain. So I think it was about 1995. I remember it was against Bulldog Town. So it might well have been the same season as Sai's first one. And uh, I think Cheltenham were losing at half time, but they came back to win. And I've got a feeling Jimmy Smith might have scored. But that's about all that's about all I can remember. Um so yeah, obviously delighted to be here. That was a two one down and three two up. Could well have been. Yeah, yeah. Your memory's better than mine. <laughs> I wasn't born. <laughs> I, I remember <laughs> I remember that game because I, I sneaked into the main stand at half time because it was so cold. <laughs> ah, okay. Nah. Okay. Couldn't couldn't get couldn't get away with that these days. But uh yeah. No problem. Long time. Long time. <laughs> the confessions of a Cheltenham Town fan, eh? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we have it. Those are our three, uh, our three panelists, I suppose. I, so I've been thinking about what to call you guys, but obviously contributors, obviously, because you're a part of this, and I thank you all for joining me. Um, obviously, the reason why we're here is pretty, it's pretty plain obvious, like I said. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about the weekend's game. Uh, Owen, Simon, I know you guys went. Unfortunately, me and Joe didn't go, part-timers, but there you go. I have watched it on iFollow, so at least give me that uh, before you give me any stick in the comments. <laughs> um, but yes, before we do start, though, I know this has been a big question. Uh, the Callum Wright thing, I'm kind of regretting now. Well, not, of course, because he's here, so what does it matter? Um, so we're going to do the... The draw for the for the Callum Wright, well, it's not even the Callum Wright away shirt, it's just an away shirt, obviously. Uh, thank you all for taking part. Please, if you don't win, start and unfollowing and, you know, running off. Because I guarantee you, I've got another one coming up. And if I was you, I would definitely prefer the next one to this one. So, uh, yeah, I'll just quickly run that through and then we'll get talking to the lads about, uh, yeah, about Saturday's game. Now, this is probably awkward for everybody listening, but we're just about to spin the wheel now. And let's get this Callum Wright retweeter away shirt competition underway. Do we have a winner? 
Yes, we do. There we go. There's our winner, George Coulthard. Well done. Uh, big well done to you. If you drop us a, a message on Twitter, uh, we will get your prize to you. And I will quite happily cry as I hand it to you or post it to you. Either way is absolutely fine. <laughs> but yes, well done. And thanks to everybody again for, for taking part in that. I do have another big one coming up. Uh, just got to get something sorted this weekend for it. And then I will announce that. So, guys, no more messing about from me. Obviously, it's a fan show. It's about you guys. Um, of course, I want to go round round the table, so to speak. It's back. Football is back, especially Chantham Town football. I don't know about you guys. The Euros in the summer was brilliant. I said that, but it's nothing like this. Um, especially after what we've been through the last 18 months. Not being able to be there when the boys won the league, but we can be there when you know we're in a, a next level up. So, first and foremost, Simon, how good was it finally to be back in attendance in person at a oh, Chatham Town game? It was brilliant. It really was. Um, I mean, that was my first away game since Boxing Day in 2015 when we played Kidderminster. Um, so to do an away day on the opening day of the season just felt great, you know. Um, even the tour of the Midlands due to the traffic didn't put me down, you know. Um, it was my son's first away day as well, uh, my 10-year-old, so he absolutely loved it. It was just great being back amongst fans. I went to both the Bolton and the Exeter game last year when we were allowed fans in. And it wasn't the same. It was, I mean, it was great to see some football. But it really wasn't the same. Saturday, it felt normal again in the bar before the game, in the ground before the game, and then the match itself. It just felt great being back there, you know? Yeah, definitely. What was the atmosphere like for you? Uh, obviously, 360 town fans, big well done to all of you uh, for going. What was the atmosphere like? <laughs> I was a bit disappointed with it, to be honest. I, I actually, th I thought, you know, our first game back in League One in 12 years, first game in 18 months, first proper game in 18 months, I thought we'd take a good seven, 800 up there. Um, so to only take 360, I was a little bit disappointed, to be honest. Um, you know, everyone has their reasons for not going. There'll be people who will still be concerned about COVID situation and whatnot. Um, and obviously the M6 would have put a few people off. But, you know, we're not that well supported as a club but when we have a big game and crew it, yeah it's crew but it was a big game on saturday we do usually turn up so i was a little bit disappointed with the numbers on saturday but that being said everyone was well up for it it was a re from start to finish i think the boys everyone got right behind the boys i really do yeah, definitely. I was, I was kind of shocked of actually about the number 360 when it was read out on uh, on BBC Radio Gloucestershire. I was kind of surprised. Owen, uh, obviously, what was it like for you as well and what was the atmosphere like? Yeah, I think I can only really echo what uh, Simon's already said. I think just everything about a match day, everything about a away day, for that to be back again, it was just feeling like that normal. And, you know, you don't want to bang on about what's happened in the last 18 months and the reasons why we've not been able to be there. But everything about it, like... To begin with, when 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 you're in the pub with everyone before the game, it's kind of weird because you're thinking, God, this is so not what we not what we've been used to for so long. But it's just great being back with everyone, and I just think that whole ritual from the drive up, the laughs you have on the way up, you do the, all the reminiscing and the memories, you know, all the away days you've been on, and you know, just that whole feeling of being back. I think from a mental point of view, like that's it's such a good feeling. And I think for everyone to be back as a whole collective again. Um, it was just great. The atmosphere was great. Like I said, everyone was really up for it. And it was just it was just great to kind of just stand back, you know. That's the first time I've seen Cheltenham in League One. So, you know, for me that that's a, a big moment for me. And just also seeing how well we how we how well we played. It you know, we looked at our level and I just thought, yeah, it's great to be back. No I did no more words on that really. Yeah, put perfectly, I think. Yeah. Uh... This, it, it was uh, it was good to see it. I, you know, I mean, I didn't go obviously. Um, the videos that I saw, I could you could hear the lads and lasses on the on the radio coming through the radio. I thought it was a great atmosphere, and you know, we will talk a little bit about the game. But uh, yeah, first and foremost, it's great to have, see the fans back in and 
you know, be finally a little bit closer to what is normal, if normal was ever a thing, you know, it's, which out in town fans are not bloody normal, are we, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the game. Uh, Joe, I'll come to you first on this one. Uh, what were your thoughts on the game in general? And uh, what do you think of, yeah, our first game back at this level? Um, yeah, I mean, overall, good, you know, satisfying start. I think um, playing a team like Crew is quite a good gauge of sort of where we're at and what's to come because sort of thinking about this, they're almost like a season ahead of us in terms of they got promoted and then they had a, you know, very solid sort of mid-table finish last season. So if we were to sort of repeat what they've done, then we'd be very, very happy. Um, you know, and on the face of it, like we had the better of the game. Um, it looks like we created some really good chances, couldn't quite finish them. So obviously disappointing that we're not finishing them, but at least we're creating them. Um, that's the main thing. So obviously we've had a, you know, a signing today, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. And then, uh, you know, it's well documented that we're looking for another striker. Um, so hopefully those chances will start to be taken. But overall, it's a really promising start. We look really organised. Um, and, you know, going into sort of a couple of really tricky uh, league games on Saturday and next Tuesday, it's... Um, it's given us something to build on. So, yeah, I, I agree. Owen, your thoughts on that one? Yeah, absolutely. I thought, you know, we didn't um, look worried about going up a league. We didn't look out of place at all. Um, I completely agree with the point. Crew are, you know, they're one season ahead of us. But that, I, I mean, even in the build up, Duff alluded to it. Like, we're very similar teams. We're hard to break down. We're very well structured. Uh, our tail's gotten very well drilled, but we're also very well drilled too. Like there was no, there was no kind of bedding in process needed for us. It's going through pre-season, all the kind of infrastructure and the routines and the, and the team. It's, it was all set up, and it kind of felt like it just felt like you know this squad's been together a season or two, like it has, and they just, I think they just comfortably had a really good solid game. Um, I don't think we were under significant pressure for any any periods of the game. I don't think we complete we didn't control it by any stretch of the imagination. But I just think we felt co- we were comfortable, and I think we. I mean, we were chatting after the game with, with friends. If we have another, you know, forty games like that this season, we'll be we'll be absolutely fine. Um, I think it's a positive start, you know, and a draw away. I don't think you can complain about that at all. No, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, Simon, the boys alluded to it, you know, you'd take that, wouldn't you? 3 p.m. on Saturday, you'd have took that. Uh, given our record on opening days, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think we haven't won on the opening day since the year we were relegated, was we? Um, so, you know, it's it's always a good result to get a draw. Away from home, crew and no mugs, we all knew that. Um, I think you and John nailed it last week on the podcast when you said, you know, they are like us, so it's it's better than playing a Sunderland or an Ipswich where if we get a battering, we were probably expecting it. Um, and I thought I thought we were I thought we were really good. You know, we didn't look like fish out of water. We we looked like the same team we were. Um, and I know the players are the same, but it is a step up. Um, and Crew didn't embarrass themselves last season. They were a mid-table team. So I think the way we dominated the start of both halves. We came out all guns blazing. I thought we were the better team at the start of both halves. Yeah, we let crew in it towards the end of each one. But other than that, I thought we were the better team. It's the same issues that we had last season that worry me. Obviously, we've brought Carl Vassal in now. Um, as great as our defence is, up front has been a worry for a long time now. Um, Alfie will run and run and run, and he's fantastic at that. I was a bit concerned about the shot he missed you know he's going to miss a one-on-one and that's i don't want to do the lad down because like i said apart from that i thought he was fantastic on saturday um but hopefully with carver's out coming in if we do get another forward we'll actually have some bite up front to put these chances away because i think that will be our our biggest weakness this season if we nail that i think we're fine i honestly do yeah, I, I think you're right. In terms of, I think we take our chances like we should have against Crew Saturday. I think we will be absolutely fine. Um, obviously, didn't get the perfect start, was it really, in terms of uh, throwing the goal down? I don't know about you guys. Um, I've seen the goal back. Obviously, Ellis Chapman slip. 
I wasn't really impressed with the defending after that. Um, but were you, were you in, in terms of I was kind of pleased with the way we reacted to that, were you guys uh, really worried at all after going that goal down and thinking, now is this where we're going to see where we're actually at rather than going a goal up? Joe, what are your thoughts on that one? Um, I mean, I think, you know, we, we've we always been sort of all right under Duff, generally speaking, when we've gone behind in games. We don't really sort of tend to collapse. I mean, you know, you know, can count the sort of number of bad defeats and sort of back-to-back -back defeats we've had under him, you know, on one hand, really. Um, so, I mean, I, I feel like their goal was a poorer goal to give away than our goal, if that makes sense. I mean, obviously, they both came from mistakes, but theirs was just an absolutely glaring error that was like a a direct through ball for Andy Williams. Like, he couldn't have played it any better or worse, depending how you're looking at it. But, um, you know, and then I think, like you were saying, with the goal that we conceded, the disappointing thing there is there is another phase of play after Ellis Chapman gives it away. But then it looked, from what I saw, that we were already really deep because he received the ball on the edge of the penalty area. We were already so deep. And, you know, it was kind of, it was a tricky situation to then sort of not concede a goal at that point. But, um I mean, talking about Ellis Chapman, I mean, I think he could be quite an important player for us, for us this season because I think there were times last season where we saw flashes of what he's capable of, but he never quite had a consistent run in the team and he had a bit of trouble with injuries. So, um, obviously, you know, there's been a lot spoken about how um, late our recruitment's been and all that kind of thing, but there's a lot to be said for improving upon what you've already got and someone like him who is only 20... Um, you know, with the right players alongside him in the midfield, he could be really important for us this season. Yeah, I think he can. So I know you was uh, itching to get a get a comment in on that one. What are your thoughts, mate? No, I, uh, I thought I thought Ellis Chapman brilliant after the mistake. To be honest, um, I think and I was the mistake. I was actually thinking he's the weak link in the middle, but after that he was actually a lot better. Um, my biggest issue with the goal was Mandron being allowed to turn in the box. You can't let a player that could turn in the box. Um, and the fact that he was allowed to do that and then get the shot off, I think that was the bigger issue than Chapman being tackled, to be fair. You know, players coming through the back of it, that's going to happen. But allowing a striker that could, I would say that could, he's called 12 goals last season, uh, but allowing a striker like him to turn in the box and then get the shot, I think that was the bigger, to be fair, with with regards to the goal. Yeah. Oh, and do you agree with that? In terms of yeah. it wasn't always it's not necessarily the first phase there, it's more on the second. Yeah, I think so. I mean there's no no just I think you know we didn't have Tozer um in that game and I thought that defence played really well. I, I think the whole team was really well structured. That goal was a poor one to give away. Um but I don't think it should take away from how well actually the defence played for the rest for the whole of the game. I think in League Two, that's a type of goal we might actually get away with because I don't think some of the strikers might not do what Mandron did. Um, I think it that probably just shows a little bit of maybe naivety or a little bit of a kind of a you know a grounding like this is going to happen if we're going to make those mistakes, if we're going to try to play that way, we will get punished for those mistakes. Whereas in League Two, we might. It might have been a bit more 50 50. Um, but you know, it, that doesn't mean we're not going to come away from that style of play. I think we will try and play out from the back from goal kicks. It was so obvious, though. I think from the goal kick, like we were taking so long to take, he didn't want to play it in the box. But um, I also think Chapman's ball was going to be so obvious to Hussey, it was probably going to be intercepted anyway. So it was, going to, I think it was going to be a problem anyway. But you know, if that's the one thing. The one real mistake we made in the game, we got punished for it. It's more of a, you know, this is going to happen in this league. It's kind of a bit of a wake-up call, and I think we responded to it really well. We got a bit of our own luck with it, but, you know, that's, 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 I'm more than happy with that, and we will make those mistakes, I think, that's this season with the way we play. I think I think doing it without Toza was such a massive thing because, you know, he played every single game last season, so you're, you're missing your captain, you're missing the first point of distribution. I mean, you think about it, every time we play it short from the back, it always goes straight through him. And there were a couple of games last season where his distribution was slightly off, and that completely threw our rhythm. I think about, like, that Barrow game at home in particular was a pr really awful one where he wasn't quite at it, and then it had a knock-on effect further up the pitch. And then, of course, you're missing the long throw as well. You know, it was encouraging that we managed to create so many chances on Saturday without, you know, our best weapon. So, you know, that's to come. And 
you know, I quite look forward to hopefully bagging one from a long throw against someone like Sunderland and their fans having a Twitter meltdown. That would be quite good. So, <laughs> agree with that, Si? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I don't mind a bit of long ball football. I mean, I, I was brought up on Steve Cottrell, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm quite conditioned for it, really. <laughs> the old. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. Um, but yeah, you mentioned that. I didn't touch on that, actually. We will do quickly. Um, lineup. Let's talk a little bit about the lineup. Well, you guys, obviously, me and JP spoke about it on Thursday. And we were saying, will Toes play? Won't you play? Longley was in with a shout. You know, Chapman, like we said, even though we'd signed the two, uh, Callum Wright and, uh, and TP, into the team. Were there any surprises for you? And was Toes a one for you, Sai? Yeah, he was. I, I mean, to be honest, I've only of the pre-season games, I only went to Cinderford. Um, and whilst I've followed what's gone on, I didn't really take into account the fact that Toes barely played over pre-season. So when we heard the team, when we heard the team about two o'clock on Saturday, I was a bit surprised not to see him in the team. Um, I expected him to come on at some point as well. Um, so that surprised me. Um, I was also surprised that Callum Wright didn't go straight in either. Again, with all the fanfare of him coming in, I thought he was nailed on the start. Um, and I expected him on at any point during the game, so I was surprised he didn't even come on. Um, but then you take into account the fact he probably had, what, one training session with them? So I think the team picked was the right team. Um, I think Duffy got it nailed on, to be honest. Um, I think, ultimately, they showed that they can make the step up, um, and they did really well with that. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you there. Uh, oh, and I saw you nodding there about Callum Wright not coming into the team. Is that the one that stood out for you as well as Toes? Um, and just cast yeah, I guess so. Him? You know, to Toes is really, only had 45 minutes, is not he? He had 45 minutes against Warsaw and that was it. Yeah, I think, I mean, it was it was completely justified why he didn't play. Um, I think if, if Sean Long didn't do so much covering for Will Boyle last season when he was out injured, I would have been a little bit more worried seeing him at centre-back. But like I say, Long, he looked like he'd been part of that 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 three at the back just as long as Tozer would have been he, he seemed absolutely comfortable there which is good to see um Chapman obviously he's had a quite a good bit of momentum from pre-season um he's not really like Joe said he's not really got going yet and I'm I, he's, he's obviously still very young I'm still not entirely sure what type of role he plays in that midfield in terms of what what is it? He is he that box to box? Is he going to be that kind of attacking, creative midfielder? Is he? I I'm. I think over the season we're going to start to learn about what type of player he is. I think maybe he's going to be a bit more of a a Clements style player. You know, he's, he's got he, he backs himself on the ball. Um, he seemed very much box to box on Saturday, and I think after that goal, after that mistake, I was expecting him to come off some way through the second half. But he, he coasted the game absolutely fine. And I think if that was the one change I would have made some point throughout the game was to bring Callum Wright on for him and probably drop Sirkin back into more box-to-box. -box. I mean, Sirkin was fantastic and so was Connor Thomas. And Chapman was just as just as good without that mistake. Um, but I, I think, again, going back to the similarities of the two teams, Crew only used two subs, I, I believe, too. So and we only made one. I yeah. think that just, just shows the similarities and how much... You know, both managers don't actually want to change it if it's just going fine. I think we've got good options from the bench, though. Um, and I think one, Callum Wright could have made an impact on that game. Um, so, yeah, but I think it's it's it, it, it worked. Everything was justified. And I think, as always, you just trust stuff. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think uh, I mentioned it while I was in those subs and it was the fact of actually, he didn't really need to make any, did he, other than... Although I was surprised it was made for May for Lloyd, to be honest. I was a bit surprised by that. I don't know if that was a surprising one for you, Joe. Um no, I think Lloyd's sort of the natural change, particularly because there were well, E Banks is on the bench, but obviously Lloyd's got a lot more experience than him. And um I mean, Duff isn't a manager who makes sort of early subs or necessarily makes that many substitutions, but he would I think he tends to change one of the front two or both of the front two at the same time. We saw that a few times last season. So I think that was the natural substitution. I mean, like Owen said, you'd have thought Callum Wright might have featured from the start potentially or at some point in the second half. But, um, you know, um, Perry's only probably had 
you know, one training session with us and he's brand new. It's not as if he was with us last season. So, yeah, Lloyd was the natural change, I think. It's, I mean, it would have been a lot to ask of Ebanks to come on, I think, in that game. Um, I think as much as potential as he's got, it's, it's a big step for him. So Lloyd coming on made a lot of sense. And I think it probably says a lot about our fitness levels as well. Um, I think that's something that Duff's talked about a lot in pre-season and the condition that the players came back in at the start of pre-season. Um, you know, I think we're a really fit team and considering the amount of work that we do off the ball, um, you know, it says a lot that on the opening day we were only making one sub and that was with 10 minutes to go. So it's it's promising. Yeah, yeah, it is. Now, you obviously spoke about uh, the crew goal. Let's talk a little bit about our goal then. Sorry, Sai, go on. I was going to say, I, I think the only surprise was that it was made that went off and not Willow. Um, from about 60, 65 minutes, you could see yeah, that Willow was, that, that was my point, absolutely yeah. hanging. Um, whereas May still seemed bags, still seemed to have bags of energy. So Lloydy coming on, that made sense, absolutely. I honestly thought it would be Willow that was going off. That that was the only surprise for me, really. Yeah, and I think that that yeah, like I said, that's that was more of my point with it. It wasn't, you know, not gonna sit here and say Lloydy shouldn't have gone and so that, you know, Wright and Perry probably should have done none. I mean, it is in like I was probably shocked that it was Alf, because I thought Alf was still very much actively in the game. Um, but yeah, like I said, we spoke about the crew goal. Let's talk a little bit about our goal then. Um, if we get them handed to us like that this season, I don't think we're really going to struggle to find goals, are we? But, you know, it's not going to be like that every week. Oh, and what was it like from your perspective? Because for me, it was like one of them goals that needed a little tune in the background, a little comedy tune. <laughs> yeah, something like Laurel and Hardy in the background. I, I don't, I just, I don't know how it came about. I remember watching about the highlights, and I realised I actually came from from one of Owen Evans' kicks, which shows just why we got him for that distribution. He can get the ball up there quick. Um, but I mean, it was Alfie May again biting at the ankles of the defender, causing him some grief, so he's had to force that ball back. Um, I can't remember what I was going to say. I was going to, um, but I just, it's. It's one of those ones. I think going back also to the to the substitution. I think if anyone was going to carry on scoring, it was going to be Williams. He's he's been he's been firing in 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 pre season, and I think points last season he was kind of um, a lot of people would sigh if he was brought on from brought off come off from the bench. But he got the goals when they mattered last season, and I think coming into the season he's he's the striker. Actually, most of our fans have been quite excited to to see. To, to start and you know he got he, he got that goal and I thought he was brilliant value for it um I think it could be a big season for Williams and I think that league one experience just shows really so it was great and I mean celebrations in the stand again everyone just going that just uh, that was what I was all part of I mean that's that was just one of the great reasons to be back and it was perfect time I'm sorry that was what I was going to say we need that goal before half time is just it, it was perfect like it was exactly what we needed um, it just meant we didn't need to go back into that second half panicking. We could just see that game out and di and not have to force onto them because I think they would have managed that game quite well at one 0 going into the second half. So yeah, it was just it it just was perfect, and I think it was for for us gifting them their goal. I think it it was just what we deserved too because I think we were full value for that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree with you. Sorry, same same for you. I'd imagine. First celebration back in a long yeah, time. I think and, uh, a goal like that. <laughs> yeah, well, I think March April time. Willow misses that. Willow doesn't get to it because I think he lost a bit of the season, didn't he? Uh, the pre-season he's been fantastic, and you can tell that was momentum that was uh, that made him react when he did and get to it as quick as he did. It was almost like slow motion because you knew he was going <laughs> to score as soon as that ball was played across. You knew he was getting to it. Um, but and then when it did go in, it almost seemed to take a few seconds for everyone to start cheering. Um, so it, it, it he, he really read it well and fair play to him. And as Owen said, it, it come from May being the little git that he is. He, I mean, the boy runs and runs. I get tired watching him. Um, so to see him <laughs> to see him win the ball like that, I thought he was fantastic to be honest. Um, but I, yeah, just to go back to Owen's point, I think a couple of months ago, Willow misses that. Whereas after the pre-seasons he, he's had, that instinct was there. And you knew as soon as it went in, he was scoring. Yeah. Joe, you agree with that? I see you nodding. And... Yeah, I just think that with Alfie May, um, 
there's so much more. <laughs> he offers a lot to us, even if he's not scoring. I think that's the key. And it's a tricky one with him because when he first signed for us in those sort of couple of months before lockdown, you know, he scored, you know, six or seven goals in his first 12 games. And you're thinking to yourself, oh, we've got ourselves a 20 goal a season striker here. And then, you know, this the season just gone, it didn't quite happen like that for him. And, you know, he ended up with was it, 11 goals, which is still a decent return. But um, he offers a lot, you know, he offers a lot more than just scoring goals. And he does miss some chances, but it's just that running off the ball. And we have seen him set up goals for people as well with some really good play when he sort of drops a bit deeper or a bit wider. So I think him alongside someone like Vassell could be a really interesting um, combination. Um, because I do, you know, I do sometimes think that May, Williams and Lloyd, you know, they're all good players and they all add value to the side, but they're all quite similar. Um, and I don't think the sale will be in that same mould at all. So that would be really, really interesting. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Oh, and you mentioned it there. It was the perfect time to score just before half time. Um, what were your thoughts at half time? Because for myself, obviously, I don't want to go too much because I've got Thursday to do this. But uh, I thought, you know what? We're very much in this game. We've got a little confidence booster at the half. We're going to come out here now. And I think our best chance to score will be in the first 10, 15 minutes of the game. And arguably, we probably should have done, shouldn't we, really? Yeah, I think so. Um, it was half time. You're just thinking because that goal is right down by our stand where we were attacking. You're thinking, God, I just, just one goal there, it would set the stand off. Um, but and, and we did have that opportunity. I just, <laughs> the thing is, though, you half expected it with me, and I think no, nobody was actually surprised that he didn't score it because, like, like you say, he isn't an out and out goal scorer. He's just somebody who's going to work work hard. Um, but. Yeah, there, there was no surprise in League Two. Alfie May wouldn't have been finishing those goals last season, and that that was a lot of the frustration last season. He couldn't he couldn't finish those, and I think Sam Smith come in and he, he added that little bit more quality. And I think with Andy Williams, he's that he's that bit of experience, and he is an out and out goal scorer. All right, he's not done it every club he's been at, but I mean for Doncaster, he's done it. I think for us at times um, last season, he, he he was just he could finish, he could find that bottom corner so easily whereas Alfie May would normally have a shot and then hope to get on the rebound because it normally gets saved nine times out of ten with the one-on-one -on -one. but I think yeah I think we I felt quite hard done by at the end of it I was happy with the draw of course I was but I think I did feel quite hard done by that we didn't go on and win that match because so I think we we would have I don't think anybody any Cree fan would have been upset well they obviously they've been upset but they wouldn't have had any qualms about us about them losing that game because I think on the chances had Owen Evans didn't have to make a save. We were we were looked exactly like the better team to go on and win that game. But I think like we were just happy with the result, and I think the game just gently cruised out with no no other issues bar that bar that Alfie May couple of chances. But hopefully now we have got a striker who's going to uh, finish those off, and we can rely on a, a couple of more to come in. Yeah, agree with that. I agree. Uh, so you feel the same at halftime? He's, a, like he's an instinctive games. striker. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I, th I was never worried. Even at one nil down, I thought we're the better team here. We we will get back into this. Um, but the goal before halftime it made it that much more comfortable. Um, I was intrigued to see how we started the second half. And as I said earlier, we started both halves really, really well. Um, in fact, the first 10 minutes of the second half, I thought was our best period of play for the whole game um, because we went straight at them and they didn't know how to handle us at first. Um, and I think I think we should have gone on to win, really. You know, another day we win that game. But by the same token, we say Owen Evans didn't have a save to make other than that one-on-one -on -one and then the chance immediately after their keeper didn't really have that much to do either. No, he didn't. And actually, I was looking at the stats earlier. I think if they, they won the possession battle um, literally marginally. It was li nothing in it. And the, the thing that stood out to me was the majority of that game was played either in the middle of the park or just inside the opposition's half. There wasn't really any activity in and around each other's goals. And I, I, I found that quite interesting, to be fair. Joe, um, for you then, 
obviously we're not going to say we're not happy with the point. I'm happy with the point. We mentioned earlier we'd have took that. Um, what were your thoughts on the second half? Um, well, yeah, it seemed like, you know, from what I saw and read that it, it did sort of drift slightly towards a draw without either team really threatening or sort of particularly going for it. And I think actually Duff was saying in his sort of pre-match interview today that at a different point in the season, that is a game, he even admitted himself, that is a game that we would have gone for and we could have gone for and we could have won it. But in the context of it being on the opening day, I think he did play it a bit safer, which you you can understand. And, you know, it's, it's, it's natural as fans, you want your teams to go for it. But if we'd have gone for it and he would chucked on Lloyd and we'd have gone three up front and then they hit us on the break in the last minute, we'd all be moaning about it. So, yeah, you know, it's a decent start. I think coming from behind as well, it always, a draw always feels so much better when you've, you know, you've gone behind and sort of pulled it back, which we did. Um, so I think there's a lot of positives to take from it. And, um, you know, we look really, really well organised and, you know, that'll stand us in good stead when we're playing against, you know, teams like Ipswich and Wickham in the next week. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so, guys, I just want to get <coughs> your final thoughts on the crew game then. Um, we'll start with you, Simon, first. What were, the, what were a few things that just stood out to you that you'd take away from that game? Um, I don't know, see. Uh, I think Matty Blair was fantastic. Um, I think seeing him in the flesh for the first time, really, I thought I was really impressed. I thought first half he was fantastic. Um, I thought... I thought Lloydy struggled when he came on, but you can put that down to the time he came on and the fact that they had a bit of impetus then. Um, so I, you don't blame Lloydy. He's, he's brought on to try and hold the ball up and every time it went to him, he was hit as soon as he got it, to be fair. Um, so uh, there was nothing to be too concerned about. The only issue was the same issues we've had for the last year and a half or so. Um, if we can, as I said earlier, if we can nip that in the bud, if we can start taking these chances, start creating some better chances, maybe, then, as I said, crew will seem like a good draw on Saturday and we'll certainly, we'll be fine this season. I said I said on Twitter, I think we'll be all right anyway, even if we hadn't made any signings, I think we had a good enough base in the first place. Um, with the signings we've made, I think there's reason to be optimistic that we could be a mid-table team this year. Very, very fair points. I agree with you. Owen, what about yourself? What are your big takeaways from Saturday's game? I just, I kind of think it's another one. A shout out to the unsung heroes of the team. I think uh, Longy was fantastic, slotted in there perfectly. Um, I think at, at points last season and, and the seasons before, people have maybe he's one of the first ones people can pinpoint as a weak spot in the team. But I think he's he's been a big influential player. Um, and I also another one is is Circum. I think Circum just worked so hard, and you can tell you can tell last season watching I follow, but in the flesh you can tell like this is his level. Like he, he's going to be solid. He's an absolute engine, just like Connor Thomas. But you know he he's the one who's going to get that quality, and he's the one who will pop up with a lot of important goals. I think this season. Um, so my main takeaways are those unsung heroes. You know, there's nothing to worry about. I think it's going to be a tough season. Of course it is. A big, big aim is just just stay up and consolidate, see how we do. But I, you know, I've got absolutely no worries that we're going to struggle this season. I just think we've got a very we're in a very good position, and I think as long as we as long as everything upstairs and in the back room stays stable, keeping Duff there, and he doesn't get any other interest, I think we're absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah, definitely, I agree with that as well. Uh, Joe, how about yourself, mate? Yeah, I, I, I think. The start that we had on Saturday just hits upon the broader point, and Sai sort of touched on this that there's a lot to be said for keeping hold of what you've already got and working with that, and then just adding some more quality. Um, you look at Cambridge losing someone like Mullin, who scored was it 32 goals for them last season. Morecambe lost their manager and had to recruit 15 players. I mean, as much as our recruitment's been a little bit slow, and we've had quite a few knockbacks in the summer, I'd rather be us than either of those other two promoted sides. And um, I think the biggest thing for us is holding on, holding on to Duff really, um, more than necessarily the players we're going to recruit, um, because he's the one who sort of organises it, puts it all together. So, 
that's my sort of bigger concern, but hopefully that won't happen. Um, so yeah, I think it just shows, you know, again, you know, we've held on, we didn't lose anyone in the summer that we wanted to keep hold of. Um, and, you know, we have added some quality um, towards the end of last week and we have done this week already. So no, it's all looking good. So I'm, I'm pretty confident. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, obviously, like I said, I'm on my set on Thursday, but I think the only thing I can say is you can tell this team has been together. You can tell this isn't just a throw together team. You could, that's the one thing, massive takeaway from me. The biggest thing that I noticed, you could tell this this squad is singing from the same hymn sheet and not many other clubs uh, are going to be able to say that this season in this league. Um, but yeah, moving on from crew. Uh, so you mentioned it earlier, I heard you shout, he's an instinctive striker, so we'll talk about it, of course. <laughs> um, Cheltenham announced today that they've signed uh, a very, what was it, a very experienced and potentially an explosive striker is how I thought I could put it across. That's my thoughts on it. I did say earlier, I'm not judging him, and I will repeat this, I'm not judging him until 10 games in because I don't think it's fair. One, you can't live off the past, and two, you can't predict the future. So let's see how it goes. But I am very excited to see what he can bring to the team. So, of course, Carl Vassal. Um, so I, I throw it to you first. Instinctive striker was your first comment. What else have you got to go with that? No, the instinctive striker was about Alfie May. We were talking about Alfie May. He was a he was an instinctive striker. He, oh, was he it? Was Alfie. Oh, was for Alfie. A problem, he? Yeah. Uh, with regards to Vazell, um, I said it. Uh, I said to you earlier. I think I, I look at it as I looked at the Luke Varney signing. Now, when we signed him, I've got a lot of family with Blackburn fans, and uh, they were quite open about the fact that he was probably one of the worst players they've had in the last few years. You know, they didn't rate him at all. Uh, now, admittedly, that would have been in the championship, but the the facts were still there. He came to us in League Two and he was a class above. You know, as he scored his first season with us, it was about 20, he was pushing 20, wasn't he? 14, 15. Um, so ultimately, sometimes players just fit and you hope that Vassell is like that. By the same token, he could be another Paul Connor. He could be come, come in with lot and ends up being an absolute disaster. I, I will judge a player on how he does for the club you know i'm very much a fan of those who try you know you can you can be the best player in the world but if you're not bothered then i i won't really care for you whereas if you're a damien spencer or paul brayson remember paul brayson he was absolutely rubbish like he ran right. through brick wall for the club i'll tell you um, <laughs> so i i would have given him paul brayson that much credit <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm with you on. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on so Spencer. Hard. I'm with you on Spencer. He, he tried but. so hard. He was crap. Paul Brayson was crap. I'm not going to sit here and say he was a good striker, but he didn't have bloody try. And I've got a lot of time for tries. I don't. I don't even remember him trying that hard, to be honest. Uh, I remember one game. What game was it? it would have been. I think it would have been Huddersfield. I think I think it would have been Huddersfield. He must have had about four or five chances, and he was in the right place every time, and the ball just would not fall for him. And then he got his goal right at the end, and I was so chuffed for him. I think we beat him four two or something, and I was so chuffed for him because he got that goal right near the end of the game, and it was so deserved. Yeah, he he tried. He was crap, but he tried, and I got a lot of time for that. Yeah, I'll take I'll take your word for it, sorry. I think we already established your memories better than mine. So I'm 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 going purely on well, numbers. So yeah, we can use Spence. We can use Spence if you like. Now there was a guy, but the thing oh, with Spence yeah. was he had moments of brilliance, didn't he? So yeah, hundred yeah. percent. If for sale, if for sales and use Spence, and then we'll be happy. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, well I, I, I hope, hope you that swimming bit, goal little... alone. I tell you, he yeah. was oh. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Owen, just some of your thoughts on this uh, on this uh, signing. And do not disrespect Paul Grayson. That guy was a legend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I just won't say anything. It's not because I have no idea who you're on about. It's just because, yeah, I just don't want to disrespect Simon or, or Paul Grayson. So, um, I think with Vassal, <laughs> getting on to the... Uh, I think there's a lot of it. There's reason to be excited about him. Um I think 
you know, he's done it at this level. That's not a signing we would have made in League Two if we were holding out for a striker by any stretch of imagination. Um, I think his his numbers speak quite well in, in League One and League Two. Um, you know, a lot of our fans remember him a few seasons ago for Blackpool when he came to Wadden Road, scored an absolute worldie. Um, and I know he's had quite a lot of fun against us. He's played against us three times and scored four goals against us. I think that's for Rotherham and Blackpool. Uh, but his goal contributions, as well as his, his goals scored, I think that's that's the type of player Duff wants. Not somebody, you know, I think Alfie May is our perfect example. He's not somebody who's just chips in with the, goal, with the goals. He chips in elsewhere all around the pitch. I think it's going to be a useful sign in that he can play anywhere across that front three as well. I know we don't play with wingers, but like you say, if that crew games, if we're about 10 games into the season and crew, we might go to a 3-4-3 and chuck three strikers up and go for it. I think Vassal can play anywhere across on the left wing or the right right wing. So I think that's that's quite useful. Um I he kind of it, it's it's gonna be an interesting one because he won't know any of the players. I was, I was trying to do some research on him and obviously he's not I don't he's not played with any of our current squad. Um but I just think the fact of he's 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 well experienced at this level. He's had a few games in the championship. I put out on Twitter earlier. I I've got it. He's got some Reuben Reed vibes where like he came in, but uh, obviously Reuben Reed was a little bit older. Um, and I think, you know, had a few injuries. Whereas for Sal, I don't think he's had injuries. He's 28. He's he's really, he's probably had the best past few seasons have been the best of his career. But I think this could be a chance for him to go on and have a really good season and score some important goals. I think he'll be one of those players who could get double figures. I'm not going. It's not going to be a 20 goal a season striker, and if he is, I can't wait for it. But um, if if he gets double figures, I'll be more than happy. If he's getting 10, 11 goals, just like Williams and May chipping in all around the pitch, like we know our players will chip in with the goals. I think he he could be a really exciting addition. Um, and if he's anything, if it's anything to go by the type of players Duff wants, the non-negotiables he asks for in players, then just I think everyone's on board with you just trusting the process of Duff, and I'm pretty sure we're going to get a really good player. Yeah, fingers crossed. It's funny you should mention um, Ruben Reed. I don't know if it was you, but someone put on Twitter earlier, um, Ruben Reed, five years younger with legs. I just thought that was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I don't know who point. that was. Uh, special men- special mention to whoever did that. Um, Joe, Joe, just your, your thoughts as well? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I echo what Owen was saying. I think hopefully we've got a sort of younger fitter faster version of Ruben Reed I thought you know Ruben Reed there were you could see some of the quality was there but he just looked a bit you know knackered basically uh, and as soon as he left I think we were lacking that kind of striker that's what we were missing and we might have been promoted a lot more comfortably if we'd have had you know someone like that um I think Carver sells an interesting one I think obviously he got that move to the championship with Rotherham didn't score any goals there but you know, last time that he sort of had a, a full season, I was looking this up, he scored 11 in 29 for Blackpool in 17-18. So, I mean, that's better than one in three. So, if you, you know, do that over a season, you've got yourself 15 goals. So, I don't know if he'll manage that many, but um, I think it's a very solid signing and the kind of striker that we need that will offer something different. And, you know, obviously he'll contribute the goals himself, hopefully, and then he can bring out you know, the best in those around him. And it will just be interesting to see who this other striker might be. I fancy it might be a loan. Um, so, that yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. Um, hopefully not Paul Brayson, because I just looked Paul Brayson up on Wikipedia and he's 43, so it won't be him. <laughs> still playing, though, isn't he? He's still up there in uh, Bedlington, isn't he? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, he's a Bedlington Terrier. He's a Bedlington Terrier. I'm sure he will. He'll do it. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't, ex- I wasn't still... expecting this Paul Brayson chat when I came on here tonight, I must be honest. <laughs> uh, well, that's what you get when you bring I could baffle you with some of the rubbish. You've got to get used to that. It's good having this uh, this forum as an outlet for this kind of stuff because, uh, yeah, we all need <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Who brought up Simon's uh, Brian Smeetle? Just going back. <laughs> no, I didn't bring up Michael. That was Sam. That was I brought up. Was, um, uh, who did I bring up? I brought up someone else. Yeah, you brought up Connor. So um, going back to Kyle Vassell. Yeah. Um, you know why we're here. <laughs> um, going back to that. Before it, gets, um, before it gets out of hand. We know we've done. 
Yeah, we know with Duff that he, he likes the goals to be shared around the team, you know. So if as Joe and Owen have said, if he can get 10, 11 goals this season, that will do because there will be goals from Will, there'll be goals from Cirks, there will be goals from I tell you, Chapman had a couple of good strikes the other day. I was, I was actually quite impressed with Ellis the other day, uh, the couple of strikes mm-hmm. that he had. Um, wasn't scared to have a pop. We know Callum Wright can score goals. So as long as he can chip in, that's the important thing. We're not, we'd all love a 20 goal a season striker. We can't afford a 20 goal a season striker unless we find one by accident. Everybody would love a 20 goal a season striker. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, as long as he can chip in, as long as he can work hard. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. I think, I don't know about you guys, I think you are mentioning double digits. If we can get Alf in double digits, Willow in double digits, the Sal now in double digits. You've got, like you mentioned, Sirks, Callum Wright, Connor Thomas from a penalty. He's obviously class from there. And let's not forget what Boyley can do. I mean, most prolific defender outside of Jamie Victory that we've ever had, I think. Um, but yeah, so the, there is goals in this team. And I think for my, just to wrap it up on it, I think it's good to have him in with the potential that he's got. And Joe, you mentioned Rotherham. He actually, 28 starts, 27 bench appearances, uh, four goals, two two in the FA Cups. So he scored six goals altogether. Um, Fleetwood was his last trip, that last stop. 24 starts, four off the bench, four goals. I did say earlier I was kind of concerned a little bit about that. But, um, you know, like I said, we'll just see how it goes and... And yeah, so who mentioned the Blackpool game, by the way, before we do move on to, uh, I do want to talk about tomorrow quickly. Uh, who mentioned that? Was it you, Owen? Mentioned the yeah, I, saw, I just saw the video twice, and I do remember standing behind the goal and absolutely smashing the world in the top corner. Um, yeah, but I ain't got yeah. many yeah. Tedious little link. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there's a tedious little link in there, so I was doing my research on that. So two things linked with this past weekend. Uh, one, can anybody name... Who refereed that game that day? Trevor Kettle. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I wasn't there. <laughs> Is it not Trevor Kettle? It was actually, <laughs> no, it was actually Ben Toner who refereed the game on Saturday, uh, which okay. I found was brilliant. And also, James Jennings scored in that game for us, and he's also retired this weekend, so uh, all the best to him. But yeah, I thought there was a couple of links for you. I just found it hilarious. Yeah, retired, yeah, retired this weekend. Uh, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, it was due to injury. Yeah, had to call it a day. Uh, so that's unfortunate. So we wish him all the best, of course. Um, guys, uh, before we do wrap up, guys, is anybody going to Bristol Rovers tomorrow? I think so. Still undecided, but I'm prob- probably no, will I'm be going. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm um, coaching my boys on that tomorrow. Point, we'll I'm start afraid. with you then. Coach Simon, oh, sorry. I love that. <laughs> what, I did you, what did you say, Tom? Uh, sorry. Um, well, you'll just give, cut the thoughts on tomorrow, because obviously I mentioned on Thursday it wasn't really that big of a deal, to be fair. I'm not a fan about the Carabao Cup, I don't know about you, but uh, yeah, just some thoughts on tomorrow's game. Yeah, I um, I think if under any other manager, it would be just kind of one of those, you know, free hits, do what we can. I think with Duff, he's just, obviously, he's a winner, isn't he? He, he said he'll, he'll go into every game and we go to win it. I don't think he'll do absolutely loads of changes, but I think the type, you know, your Flinders, Tozer will get some minutes, I think. Right, I imagine will start. Perry might start. Vassal, possibly. Um, and Lloyd. Um, yeah, I just think... I, don't, I, I like what Duff said, and he does it quite a lot. You know, we played these a few couple of seasons ago in the same competition, and we got played off the park. I think it was, was, I think it was 2-0 we lost. Um, so I can play that game and I just think it's it's a good kind of measure is to see where how far we've come in that time uh, obviously Bristol Rovers getting relegated they've obviously rung in a lot of changes um, and they've got new manager and complete new setup but I just think it's, it's one of those ones if, if we lose we lose but if we win it's, it's building that momentum getting minutes into the players who need it and it'll be quite nice to have a look at the likes of the new players we brought in, if it's for Sal and Wright, to see how how easily they slot back in. Um, but yeah, it's just a short short trip, and 
see what comes because you never know. Next round, you could pull a big Premier League team and it'll be on Sky Sports or something like that. So there's another chance of revenue, which you know, no club's going to sniff out, especially us at the moment. Yeah, but perfectly. Um, just a score prediction then? Uh, score prediction? 1-0 uh, Cheltenham. Oh, cool. Joe, just to you? Uh, I'll go for two nil Cheltenham. I mean, I think we'll see. We might see a few changes in the lineup. I wonder whether Flinders might play. It's another option. I don't know whether we might use Flinders as the sort of cup keeper. Um, which is I don't know. Yeah, not sort of be disrespectful to him, but he probably wants. He he'll probably not want to be sat on the bench the whole season. I wonder if Freestone might get a look in as well. Um, yeah, possibly get some more minutes into him because I thought he looked pretty good at times when he played last season. So it'd be good to get him involved. Um, but yeah, I'd like to think even with making a few changes, like we would, we'd still have enough to win a game like that. Clean sheet would be good. So yeah, I'll go for two 0 um, Two 0 Simon, how about yourself, mate? Uh, I agree with Joe and Noah, and I think I think there'll be a couple of changes tomorrow. I think Flinders will start in goal. Um, I'm so glad we signed Owen Evans. I really am. I, I thought he was fantastic when we had him before, um, and him coming in in the summer. Um, I know I heard you waxing lyrical about Josh Griffiths on on the other podcast with John the other day, but I was concerned we were going to re-sign him. I really was. Um, and proven right, because he made a mistake again on Saturday for Lincoln. Um, so, so yeah, so I'm, I was so tough we signed Owen Evans. But I think Flinders will be the cup keeper this year. I think he's great to have there. Um, if anything was to happen to Owen, then Flinders is going to... Brilliant. He's, he is a number one, isn't he? We've got two number ones at the moment. Um, I think I think Toza might start tomorrow yeah. and be lead the line again. Um, and I think, I'm not sure for Salah's start. I think he'll be in the squad. Um, I think we'll see Lloydy start. I think Ryan and Perry will both get a game as well. Um, so it'll be good to see them all going again. I think, I think Rovers are in a bit of turmoil still. I think there's a lot of off issues with with the management there and I think they've been overhauled over the summer and that could all still go to pot in the next couple of months. I think we need to strike while the iron's hot. They they lost on Saturday, didn't they, to Mansfield with a last minute goal. Um and uh, they had a sending off there as well. I think we need to strike whilst the iron's hot, show the professionalism we've got as a club. And I, I think two 0 as well. I think I think we'll win quite comfortably, to be honest. Yeah, I certainly hope so, sort of, because I think it'd be nice on a Tuesday off. We didn't, not as if we had enough Tuesdays last season, was it? Um, but yeah, I I, th- I agree with all of you. I think we'll see changes. I think we'll see uh, Michael Duff go in to take advantage to see where we're at. I think it'll be a measuring stick in terms of they played us off the park when we played them. They were in League 1, we were in League 2. I think it's going to be Michael Duff in the change room saying, right, this is our turn to go and show them we're League One, they're League Two. And uh, in terms of predictions, I can't even remember what I did today, let alone what I said on Thursday. So if you want my prediction, guys, please rewind back to the previous episode and it'll be on there somewhere eventually amongst me rabbiting off and JP putting up with me. But guys, um, I think unless anybody else has anything else they want to say or add, add, add anything to the to the show, I think we'll wrap it up there. No, just thanks for the opportunity. Good to be no, part of. Yeah, thanks for having us. Good to meet you guys. Yeah. Cheers, Tom. No worries. No worries. Thanks for joining me. I know it's. I know what it's like. I know it's like taking the time out of your evening. It's uh, It's always a dedication. But I thank you for for doing that. And obviously, I thank you guys for listening and watching at home. Um. Well, we're at home. I don't know what I'm saying at home. It's not like we're in a studio or anything like that. I don't know where that <laughs> comes from. But um, <laughs> but, but yeah. As always, make sure you please do uh, subscribe, like the video and share. We're so close to 100 subscribers on YouTube, so make sure you go and do that. If you're listening to Apple uh, Apple Podcasts, I believe you can also review. So if you can leave a, a nice five-star written review, type anything you want. Just give me the stars. I, I don't care about what you're making. I do. But a uh, nice written review is always appreciated. Again, congratulations to our competition winner earlier, George Coulthard. Do give me a, a message and we'll get that sorted out for you. Guys, before we do go, actually, I just want everybody to know where they can find you. Uh, so, Owen? 
Uh, yeah, it's uh, Owen double underscore night. Joe. Uh, Paul underscore break. No, I'm joking. Uh, it's <laughs> Joe. <laughs> it's Joe, J O E. <laughs> I might. I'm going to change it. Actually, I'm going to change it. No, it's um. So it's Joe J O E D E S eighty seven is my Twitter. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, Simon. Simon Gardener. Oh, Gardener was with an I. Brilliant. Cheers, guys. That's absolutely fantastic, Joe. I will look forward to seeing that. Paul underscore Brayson fan uh, on yours later on today. So that might have to be <laughs> changed. But uh, <laughs> never mind. Uh, yeah, guys, like I said, thanks for joining me. Thanks to everybody who listened, watched, took the time to, you know, listen to what these guys have got to say. First ones in the bag. We'll all be back again. And uh, yeah, I look forward to doing it again. So until next time, come on, you Robins. <laughs>